I've done a lot of very contrasty work with the brush pen recently, so I was looking for an approach with inks that would give me a softer look. So I had a go in my sketchbook uh, drawing a flower using fountain pen ink, so water soluble fountain pen ink and uh, just a water brush. And it was an effect that I really, really liked. Um, the only problem with it was that the strokes of the pen seemed to show up a little bit. I was using a Lamy fountain pen here with black ink. And like I said, it's water soluble. And to make it run and move around, I used a Kurataki water brush uh, with a medium nib. So after penciling out a rose uh, picture on some 190 GSM watercolor paper, I decided what I would do is I would start with the darkest tonal areas on the entire thing. That's because if I do the darkest areas first, that should then help me kind of gauge and judge how dark, light, gray, all the other tones in the entire picture are gonna be because I've done the darkest ones first and they become kind of my reference. And this ink is really water soluble. You can see as soon as I touch the moist brush tip to the ink, it starts to move, it starts to release, it starts to flood around with the water. So you can get some lovely kind of like dark black through sort of medium gray to light gray tones just with this one black ink. So I thought I'd give you a bit of close up detail here and show you how I'm achieving a range of tones using just this black ink and the water uh, from the brush pen. So what I'm doing is as I'm laying down the ink, I'm trying not to show individual strokes of the pen. I think that's what went wrong with my sketch that I showed you earlier. You could see those strokes, individual strokes really, really clearly. So I'm trying to put down with the pen kind of blocky or bulky areas of tone rather than all these little flicked hatched strokes which might show up later underneath the ink as I uh, sort of activate it using the water brush. So once I've put down all my ink areas, I'm thinking then about adding some water using the water brush. And the Kuratake water brush is one that you just fill with water and then you give it a gentle squeeze and some of that water comes out of the tip. And here you can see me add water to the blank area of paper first and then work back towards the ink, uh, activating the ink. And then I can let it start to flood into the area that I've just wetted a little bit. And then I just work it back and forth with the brush, back and forth. I'm not actually pressing and releasing any water here because the water brush has this really, really gentle release of moisture through the tip anyway. But I work from one end to the other, gently blending it as I go so that I'm ending up with it very, very dark at the ends where I actually put the ink in the first place. And then it sort of gradually grades into a sort of gentler medium gray uh, in the center between those two areas of dark ink. So that demonstrates quite a dark area of, of inky tone. So if I want slightly lighter areas, well, really what I need to do here is put on a little bit less ink, because as you can see, it activates so quickly and can be very, very dark. So if you want an area which is gonna be a lighter area of, of gray, you need to put a little bit less um, ink on. So I activate that small section of ink with the water brush, and then I just sort of move it with the brush back and forth, back and forth, um, away from the, the original bit of where I put the ink and of course it should give you that dark to light effect as you work from the dark inky bit through with the water all the way down to the opposite edge. As you can see it's getting lighter now as it sort of floods that way and what I'm trying to do is not overwork it because if you overwork the ink then instead of having this lovely grey black effect it starts to kind of separate and you get kind of uh, a slightly yellowish, uh, yellowy green kind of um, tone starts to come through. You might see it as you see me overwork some bits later on in the video. But the fact that you were trying not to overwork it was kind of good because it made me a little bit less fussy with the way that I was trying to blend the tones. Uh, and it also made the whole job of doing the, p the piece quicker. Now, when you see me take the, the water brush out of the, the shot for a second, what I'm doing is I'm dabbing that on a piece of tissue paper just outside of the shot. And that is basically to take off anything that's too dark on the tip and kind of refreshes the tip back to just clean water. And that then allows me to keep blending from dark to light without it being too dark. So remember, every time I take that brush tip out like that and come back, I've just dabbed it on a tissue paper that's lying right next to the picture so that it, it takes the tip back to being clean water. And already, looking at this close up, you should be able to see it's achieving a completely different effect to the kind of thing that I would get from the brush pen. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the brush pen effect with its stark, hatched kind of lines, 
but this is a kind of a softer, um, greater range of tone kind of effect that you can get and it's just using a simple fountain pen and a water brush. I could use a normal brush with water with this and I could probably use a different fountain pen. It's nothing to do with the brand I don't think, it's just the solubility of uh, fountain pen ink that has just got this lovely kind of soft tonal effect. So you know usually I don't work on two petals side by side because they can bleed. Well that's exactly what I forget about here and I do put in some ink next to a bit that is already damp and as you can see that ink immediately starts to bleed into the area right next to it. It's a small area in the picture so I'm not too worried and also I can fix that with a little bit of just careful um, use of the clean tip, there you go, of the water brush so I'm not too fussed about that and plus I can add a darker edge to it later. So from there, I decide I've got to start putting in the other dark areas. Uh, so I'm trying to get all of the, the majorly dark areas in the picture done, first of all. Like I said, to help me gauge how dark and how light all the other bits need to be. So I start up here in the top corner, uh, and I speed it up a little bit here because you've already seen this kind of method of um, blending the ink using the water brush pen. But I mean, starting in the top corner, of course, so that I don't smudge any of the work as I, as I sort of work from top to bottom and also left to right because um, being right-handed. So I start in the top and I start to work my way downwards and I do little patches of very, very dark tone in between the petals, and that's the first thing that I'm doing. And it doesn't really look like much at the moment. It looks a bit abstract in terms of the picture, but by doing it in these kind of pieces, these kind of little sections, first of all, I'm going to gradually build it up as to the, the picture of a rose that you're going to see at the end. You're not going to see that immediately. Um, you know, some people work in one section and they'll just work completely and spread out from that one section. But I'm not doing that with this one because I want to get the tonal areas, um, you know, really spot on. So some of the petals have got very strong white highlights on them. Uh, and the way that I decided to do this was, yes, I was gonna add some ink so I could get some gray tones on each of the petals, but I was going to leave those um, highlighted areas paper white. So I was gonna try and move around the ink with the, the water brush here, move it back and forth, blend it in so I'm getting some nice darkish and lightish gray tones, but I was going to just completely leave the areas of the petal that were supposed to be white, that were supposed to have highlights on it, and work around those highlights. So another thing that you can see me do here is transfer some of the tone that's actually, you know, sitting on the edge of the tip uh, of the brush pen. Um, you know, as you work around the, the ink, it does, it sort of contaminates the tip for a little bit unless you're able to clean it, but that can actually work for you. And then you can transfer some of that lightish gray tone that's on the tip of the brush pen to another part of the picture. And you'll see me do that on this petal quite a bit as I sort of put some ink on here and then I activate that ink. So I'm getting this kind of edge of the petal that's away from the light to look a bit darker as though it's kind of curling under. Once I've got some of that tone on the brush, I can then use that and without wiping it off, I can go over to another part of the picture right there and transfer some of that gray ink tone, lovely light gray ink tone to another part of the petal without it being too strong and without actually having to get the fountain pen out and put any actual ink down on there. So I force myself to not be too fussy and to not keep working it and I leave those white highlights just paper white. Now I'm coming into the interior petal, so I know that it's going to be quite a lot of tone in here because these are the ones that have not quite opened yet and are in a lot of shadow from the petals around them. So what I'm going to do here for the interior petal is do it in sections. I'm not going to try and do this one entire petal all in one go. And when I say do it in sections, you'll see what I mean is I'm activating the ink here with the water brush and moving it around and getting that lovely dark to light gradation of tones. I'm not covering this entire petal. I'm working it a little bit and I'm going to do some of it and I'm just going to let it fade out um, from dark to light. And then I'm going to put some ink on a smaller, a different section of it and then work that back up into the bit that I've just been doing. So here you can see me put some ink around the bottom part of this petal. I'm going to activate it with the water brush and now I'm going to work it and work it and work it back up to meet the bit that I've just done. Now this is one entire petal uh, but 
because of this kind of technique that I'm using and the soft qualities that you get, I'm not so worried about the usual drying lines that would stop you doing this with perhaps a different medium. This petal does have a crease and that's what I'm trying to show up here as I do this third and final part of this one single petal. I'm doing a bit of dark here, I'm going to work it with the brush so that you can see this kind of diagonal crease in the petal that comes down from the sort of top left down towards the, the top, uh, the bottom right. I've talked a little bit already about transferring color on the tip of the water brush and here I show it by doing a little bit of a blob of ink outside of the picture like using a palette and then I activate it using the water brush so I've got a kind of gray tone on the tip of my water brush and then I transfer that to another part of the picture. So I'm doing a lighter grayish kind of tone somewhere else Whereas if I put down a blob of ink and try doing it that way on the picture, it might end up being a bit too dark or darker than I want it to. So this method of using the paper as a palette allows me to transfer tone to a part of the picture and absolutely guarantee it's going to be a light area of tone. The picture's only about a quarter of the way through, but I'm already getting the feeling that I need to deepen and darken some of the shadows. Uh, and I talked earlier about this inner petal being in a lot of shadow from the petals around it. So you see me go back in here and gently add a little bit more ink using the fountain pen and then just reactivate that ink using the water brush. And you can see it starts to give me a much darker area of tone in here. I'm not being too fussy, but I'm just working it from dark to light. So you get that real feel of a darker shadow area um, in that sort of top section that's in a lot of shadow. And again, I can just work a little bit around the corner here and move it down. And the best thing about using the fountain pen is it doesn't really activate the ink that you put on already. But if there was a little bit that you didn't activate the first time around, then you can go in with that later, add some water to that with a water brush and move that around. So I've shared most of the basic techniques that I found out when I was using this fountain pen ink and the water brush together. Uh, now all I had to do was finish it. So there's the finished fountain pen ink piece. And like I said, it's totally different to the kind of effect I would get with the brush pen. I absolutely love the white highlights that I was able to get, you know, leaving them white in a watercolor kind of styly. 
but I do think that I overdid this particular section here with the ink and made it a bit too dark, but it's done now. If you like the video, please don't forget to share and subscribe, and if you check the links down below, you'll find links to some of the other ink pictures that I've done. Thanks for watching.